and welcome to Talk to City Hall, uh, where the commissioners talk about issues affecting the city of Dayton. And uh, I'm Dayton City Commissioner Nan Whaley, and today we have a special Talk to City Hall with our Montgomery County Auditor in the County Building with uh, County Auditor Carl Keith. And thanks for letting us come to the office today, Carl. Hi, Nan. Thanks for coming, and then thanks for joining us in what we call our situation. <laughs> That's right. You have a, a lot of stuff going on right now with the reappraisal of property, and I know that uh, there's been a lot of media coverage about the reappraisal, and you came to the City Commission meeting to, to brief the commissioners on on the issue in the city of Dayton. So tell us why this process begins and, and, and why, why we do this. Well, every county in Ohio is required to revalue property for taxing purposes once every six years. Um, but midway through that six-year cycle, we're required to do an update based upon the real estate market. So the last countywide revaluation we did in Montgomery County was in 2008. We're scheduled to do another one in 2014, but 2011 is the midpoint, and so now we're doing what we consider an update to the 2008 re, uh, reappraisal, which again is just based upon what's happened in the real estate market in 2008, 2009, and 2010. Which was a pretty treacherous real estate market in Montgomery County, the city of Dayton, and pretty much nationwide. Yeah, you know, we're in the midst of a, a nationwide housing crisis. And certain areas of the country, of course, have been hit harder than other areas, but uh, the Ohio and uh, the Dayton area and Montgomery County have, have certainly been hit very hard uh, by the recession and uh, the housing crisis, and so uh, particularly in the 8, 9, and 10, and, and so, you know, having to deal with that makes this probably one of the most difficult uh, uh, revaluations that we've ever had to do. I, I've heard you mention that it's, it's probably the most uh, uh, lowering of values since the Great Depression is, I think, the word you use. Yes. Um, when people ask me, well, is this unprecedented? And I said, well, it's not exactly unprecedented. Uh, we're seeing, countywide, we're seeing values drop by $2 billion, about a 7% decrease in value countywide. Uh, to see values drop to that low, yeah, you would have to go back into the 1930s. Between 1930 and 1931, the county's value dropped 20%. Wow. It fell below $500 million. Um, the, the real significant thing about that, and one of the things that concerns us, is that uh, we didn't get back above $500 million again until 1947. So it took 16 years to recover from that. There's, of course, there were a lot of things going on in that 16-year period. There's Great Depression. There's a World War. Uh, but, but you know, currently we're we're dealing with a lot of things too in, in the world. And so, one of our concerns is to, having seen a decline like this. It could be another long, slow recovery process. Right, something that's no, not really good news for the city or the county on that. For anywhere in the country, really. Mm -hmm. You know, some areas of the country, Nevada, um, parts of Florida, uh, you know, they're seeing values dropping 20 and 30 percent or more, 40 percent. Um, so we, we haven't seen those types of declines, uh, you know, in large scale. But certainly there are areas of, of the community that will, and properties, and specific properties, will see their properties decline as much as 20 or 30 percent. So in Dayton specifically, what did we find in, in the Dayton area, in the city of Dayton? Uh, the Dayton area, the, the overall value in Dayton is going down about uh, 11 percent uh, residential value. Uh, which again, those those are big numbers, uh, particularly in you know in, in years past we were used to seeing values going up seven, right. eight, nine percent. So now to have values decline eleven percent, uh, you know that that's a big turnaround for us. Uh, and so Dayton is one of the communities that's been hit hard by this. Um, it's one of the communities that's been hit hard by a number of factors. And so we you know we, we certainly understand that the population decline in, in Dayton has certainly hurt the housing market here. Uh, the number of distressed sales and sheriff sales uh, and has hurt, hurt, certainly hurt the market. The number of vacant properties, all those factors coming into play in the city of Dayton. And it's, it's very a dramatic impact on the housing market and, and so we, these numbers are reflecting that. Uh, but other communities, Trotwood, uh, Harrison Township, uh, those communities are being, from a percentage basis, are really being hit harder than Dayton. Uh, but, but Dayton's numbers are, are significant to us because a third of the residential properties in the county are in the city of Dayton. And so much of what happens to Dayton impacts, has a larger impact on the county, county. as a whole. Right. And this, I think, is a, one of the reasons we, we're not really surprised by these numbers. We kind of had an idea they were coming watching 2008 to, to now. And I think it's important on the, the work that we're doing and the work that you're doing uh, to help expedited foreclosure and try to, you know, work the process of, of dealing with vacancy that is such a large issue across the city. And I know you've 
definitely been a great leader, Carl, in helping us uh, deal with these issues in, in the city as far as vacancies. Well, um, people ask me, well, what's the good news in all of this? And it's hard to find good news. But I think one of the good things is that there are uh, communities throughout the county who I think have recognized that we have uh, some long-term housing issues. Um, and, uh, you know, another factor that's driving these values is just the age of our housing stock. Countywide, over half the properties were built in Montgomery County were built prior to 1960. But in the city, it's almost 90 percent of the properties were built prior to 1960. Right. So they're 50 years of age or older. So I, I think uh, leaders throughout the community have recognized that we have some housing issues that we have to address, the vacancy and, and uh, uh, obsolete uh, uh, housing stock. And so, uh, yeah, we, you know, between the expedited foreclosure process that we've worked with the city, working on the, in the Roosevelt neighborhood area, mm -hmm. trying to, to redevelop that area, uh, the new land bank uh, that's been approved for the county, I think, is going to be an important uh, tool that can be used to help uh, turn this this issue around. Um, you know, the, the city's use of the of the neighborhood stabilization money and how they're using that money to to uh, deal with some of the abandoned and vacant properties in the county, uh, in the city. Uh, but other communities are doing those types of things as well. And uh, but it's, it's it's that's just a long. A slow process, I think, sure. before that's going to turn. We didn't get here overnight. We're, we're not going to turn this around overnight. Right. It's a patience. It's an issue of patience. So the values. Will I get my value in the mail soon? Values are going out in the mail uh, this week, and uh, so property owners will get a notice from the county indicating what their old value was and what their new value is. Uh, the, they're getting a little bit more information this year than we have in the past. Some information about their neighborhood, a map of their neighborhood, oh, great. Uh, the number of properties, the number of distressed sales, and some of the factors that we've used to, to determine their values this year. Uh, but we also include a number where they can call. Uh, that number is 225-4326, where they can call our office to, uh, if they disagree with the value, where they can uh, uh, schedule in it, what we call an informal review, meet with one of our appraisers and, and talk about uh, what they think the value of the property should be if they disagree with it. That's great. 225-4326. Uh, two, two, Fantastic. Uh, we, we'll be having these sessions at a variety of locations, uh, including a couple of different spots uh, in the city of Dayton. I think we start out at the Dayton uh, uh, Boys Academy uh, out on uh, West 3rd Street, mm -hmm. and then we'll also be at the Educational Service Center on uh, Kiwi. Uh, we'll be out at uh, the IUE Hall on Woodman. So we're, different locations around, uh, and other locations around the county, trying to make it as convenient as possible. We're holding these between the uh, first week of August through mid-September. Um, so we encourage people. This is the next phase of this process, actually. Uh, we consider all the values that we've set so far tentative until we go through this phase, until we uh, the community's had an opportunity to to meet with us and talk about it. They, again, if they disagree with the values, this is their opportunity to tell us what they think they should be, and, and we can make adjustments. So we have, this, is, this is the community input phase right. of the process. Right. You've done all the work, so now you present it to the community, and then they're able to come back and discuss it with you. Correct. Uh, so you mentioned neighborhoods, and I just want to be clear to some of our, our viewers watching, you have a different version of neighborhoods than, for example, the city does. You know, we have 65 neighborhoods in the city of Dayton. How many neighborhoods do you have in the city we of Dayton? We have about 200 neighborhoods. Right. Yeah, so our, our definition <laughs> of neighborhood is a little bit different than the, than the city's or anybody, any communities right. would be. We, we group neighborhood, we, what we call a neighborhood is where we've grouped like housing stock. Uh, for comparison sure. purposes, and so for one for one thing, one of the reasons our numbers are so much higher is we look at every condo uh, association as its own separate neighborhood. Right. So some of our neighborhoods may only have three or four uh, uh, housing units in it, where some of them would have several hundred. So uh, yeah, our definition of neighborhood is a little bit different. Right, and sense. I think that's so important to tell folks because they say, well, my house is really different. I live in Belmont, and it's a different part of, side of the Belmont, and that Belmont might have multiple neighborhoods according to the county auditor. And it does. Right. It does. That's one thing that uh, again on the notice that people receive will be a map of their neighborhood as, as we have defined. That's so great. That will be helpful for them. And uh, we certainly appreciate you really drilling down and trying to pay attention because it's, it's such a tough housing market even in the city to deal with that. Oh, yeah. So No doubt. No doubt. Uh, well, did I miss anything, Carl, that I, you want to share with well, the I City of Dayton residents? Again, again, I think the, the important thing is when they receive the notices to pay attention to it, uh, to take a look at it. If they disagree with the value uh, and, and the type of information that they would need, if, if, they, if they have a recent sale, or they've recently uh, refinanced a mortgage and so they have a bank appraisal or they know of properties that have sold in their neighborhoods that's similar to theirs. Uh, that's the type of information that they should bring to our attention if they think that the value should be something different than what it is. Um, of course, these values will be used and will be finalized in the fall 
and they will be used to generate tax bills come next January. So it's important that we get through this phase and try to make them as fair and accurate as we possibly can. And we believe that uh, the, the effort that we've done this, this time, and one of the things we've done differently is, is set an individual value rather than a set a, a neighbor, use a neighborhood factor across the entire neighborhood. And we think by using an individual value, it's going to make it more fair and equitable for everyone. And that's what we're trying to do. So again, we encourage anyone that disagrees to call us, to meet with one of our appraisers and help us, help us get it as, as fair as we possibly can. Well, we appreciate you doing that work and appreciate you talking to the community about it and coming to City Commission to be so open and uh, honest. Even if it's not the best conversation to have, you know, I always find that it's better just to be straightforward and be fair and open about the situation we have when it comes to land use. So thanks for your leadership. Thank you. You've been watching Talk to City Hall and catch us uh, every week on our YouTube channel at the City of Dayton.